Take a journey on the Silk Road, Marco Polo's ancient route to China. Produced at a cost of $50 million and requiring over 10 years to produce, the Silk Road video collection is comprised of separate adventures linking ancient and modern day Asia. Broadcast to outstanding critical acclaim in over 25 countries, the Silk Road is now available on video for the first time. With the entrancing music of Kataro as a backdrop, each of the episodes in the collection focuses on the history, art, and culture of one of the world's most inaccessible regions. In the Mongolian language, the word Hara means dark, and the word Hoto means a castle. The dark castle of Haro Hoto once lay on the Silk Road, but it was destroyed by the terrible Genghis Khan, and then it disappeared together with all the inhabitants of the region. The people were called Tangut, and the kingdom where they lived was called Xi Xie. When the destruction was over, the castle of Harohoto, which had been the fortress of the Tangut people, was buried under the sands of the Gobi Desert. The masters of the castle and the secrets of their script disappeared from the face of the earth. Our journey to Harohoto started at Jiuchang, an oasis on the Silk Road, near the Chilien Mountains. The dark castle is in the middle of the desert, about 400 kilometers or 250 miles north from this bell tower at Jiuchang. The Chinese-Japanese expedition set out for the north at the beginning of April. In Mongolian, the word Gobi means a stony wilderness. The Silk Road is mostly through wilderness. But the part between the Chilean Mountains and the Mongolian Plateau is the longest stretch of actual desert. The first person to look for Harohoto in this wilderness was the Russian Koslov at the beginning of the 20th century. He had heard stories about a lost city in the middle of the desert, and he believed there might be something in them. Other explorers to search for Harohoto 
included Haydn, a Swede, Stein, an Englishman, and Warner, an American art historian. But 50 years have passed since the last of these set foot here. There were archaeologists both from China and from Japan with us. The archaeologists noticed earthworks we were passing that were the ruins of signal towers built in Han times, about 2,000 years ago. The Agena River fed by melting snow from the Chilean mountains. About 2,000 years ago, the road by this river connecting Jiu Chang and Hara Hoto was the scene of many battles between the wild nomadic Huns and Chinese soldiers who kept the Silk Roads safe for travelers. Along the river, the Chinese built a series of forts and a line of defense extending northwards. Hara Hoto was the most northerly point of this line of defense. These statues of mounted soldiers and horse-drawn chariots were excavated near Jiuqiang and they represent members of the Chinese army. The frontier soldiers in those days were a mixed lot. Conscripts, settlers recruited from the interior of China and even convicts all helped to guard this distant frontier. Two hundred and fifty kilometers or one hundred and fifty miles from Jiuqiang, we pitch camp for the first time. The temperature during the day had been about twenty degrees Celsius or seventy degrees Fahrenheit, but during the night it quickly fell to as low as about minus six degrees Celsius or about twenty degrees Fahrenheit. This wide range of diurnal temperature is quite common in the Gobi Desert. we found the dried hoof of a camel, which showed no sign of decomposition. Perhaps the camel had been killed by wolves, we couldn't guess. In this area, the only rainfall is only about 37 millimeters, or an inch and a half, and evaporation would easily dry out a hundred times this amount. The Japanese archaeologist remarked that he would have liked to be able to explore this area on foot if there'd been time. What discoveries must be waiting in the desert to help solve some of the mysteries of history? A Buddhist picture excavated at Hara Hoto by Kozlov at the beginning of the century is now in the Hermitage Museum in the Soviet Union. In contrast with most Buddhist art, this picture is decidedly disturbing. The Tangut people who founded the kingdom of Xi Xie and who painted this picture may have been of Tibetan origin.
Tibetan culture has connections both with the West and with the East, but it is quite distinctive.